Psychologist Dr. David Eagleman is about to conduct the first ever scientific experiment to explore whether time really does slow down in a near-death situation. So in order to measure how fast people's brains are taking in information, we've built this device, which we call the perceptual chronometer. And the idea is that numbers flash very rapidly on this LED screen. They flash so rapidly that a normal brain under normal circumstances can't see what's being flashed here. But if time were running in slow motion, then you should be able to distinguish the numbers. Jesse Callis has volunteered to be our guinea pig. Can you see that there are numbers flashing on the screen here? Yes. Okay, these are flashing at a slow rate. If okay. I speed this up, at some First, point, David has to make sure that Jesse can't read the numbers when time is running normally for him. That it's very difficult to read what the numbers are. Yes, very difficult. Okay, and so are you able to read what's on the screen now? Um, yes. How about now? Uh, yes. Okay, and here, can you read the number at all? No, not at all. Okay. Let's just do this number here. Yeah, great. Is that too tight? No, go ahead. Okay. There's no way to fake this test because if time is not running more slowly, they can't see the sequence. Nervous. It's a long way down. Oh my god. Just good. Jesse is about to free fall from a height of 33 meters, 12 stories above the ground. The question is, will he be able to read the number on the way down? Jesse, did you see any numbers on this way? Yeah, 56. 56, all right, let's verify this. Okay, the number that was actually presented was a five and a zero, 50. The zero happens to look a lot like a six. So what this means is that, at least mostly, he was able to see a presentation rate that he was not able to see under normal circumstances. Maybe what we can do is try again and see if, see if you get both the numbers right this time. Again? Again. <laughs> okay. I find this result fascinating. I would have loved it if he saw both numbers exactly correctly, but this at least suggests to me that he's able to take in information faster than he was before. Ninety-six. Ninety-six? True. That's what I saw. The answer is... Ninety-eight. Hey, that's great. So, for a second time, Jesse has seen a number very similar to the one on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. These results today are very encouraging because this is the first evidence that somebody's brain can speed up and they can see the world more slowly during a high adrenaline situation. This is the first demonstration that time really can slow down. But how? Back at Duke University, Warren Mech is exploring this remarkable phenomenon. 
by giving mind-altering drugs to rats. We're particularly interested in drugs like cocaine and marijuana because we believe they can distort time perception by compressing time or lengthening time. Hi, Ray. Is everything ready? Hi, Ron. Yes, everything's ready. Good, let's go. He's going to test whether these chemicals change the stopwatch mechanism that allows the rats to measure time. So the rats have had their drugs for about 20 minutes now. As you can see, the marijuana rat is mellowed out. The cocaine rat's gotten quite mad and is trying to escape out of this cage here. And the saline rat is just acting normally. The plan is to give the animals a timing task. The rats have previously been trained to measure time precisely. If the rat presses a lever after 12 seconds, he gets the reward of a food pellet. But if he's too early or too late, he gets nothing. The rat, given saline only, does this task perfectly and presses the lever after 12 seconds, the correct time. Next, the rat on cocaine. For this rat, time seems to zip by. It presses the lever after only eight seconds. And lastly, the rat on marijuana. Here, time seems to have ground to a halt. This rat doesn't press until 16 seconds have passed. So overall, we're seeing a modulation of the stopwatch, where we can speed up our stopwatch and slow down the stopwatch, or we can maintain normal speed under control conditions. So it seems that our very real experience of time speeding up or slowing down can be directly influenced by chemicals. And this could account for what's happening in the free fall. Under high stress, we release adrenaline, and this, just like a drug, affects the chemical pathway of our stopwatch, slowing down time. It seems that even our sense of time passing, something that seems so much a part of the outside world, is an internal process, a fundamental part of our psychology.